What's up family, it's Tico, and here with your next advanced tarot tutorial. Remember, all these tutorials talk about a particular lens which stacks as we read the cards, right? And so the last one we looked at cardinal fixed and mutable signs for the astrology. In this video, we're going to be examining the 12 horoscope signs and what they kind of, I don't want to say what they mean, but how they're represented in the tarot cards. So we're going to be looking at the minor arcana um, connections and the major arcana connections um, through the cards. But more importantly, thinking about these as lenses, so not really like uh, people's personalities, like the way we do astrology with horoscopes, right? Looking at these as, um, so this is another lens or wheel to that, uh, you know, reading the tarot cards. And then... This one is applying the symbolism of the archetypes of the 12 astrology signs and then looking at the cards that correspond with it. So you're definitely going to want to follow along in your uh, PDF, free PDF that you can download. Um, if you haven't already, links into the description. And basically the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go um, one by one following along with the packet here in the wheel of the year, talk about the sign, talk about the cards that are associated with it. You'll notice in the packet, it also talks about ruling planets. Um, we'll get to that when we look at the symbols of the planets and uh, the cards that they align with and um, what those bring. Right now we're focusing on just the 12 zodiac signs. Okay, so when we're and, and their associations for the minor arcana. And just to give an example, uh, if you haven't watched the previous video, go back and look at that. You can already tell that, uh, and this is what you can figure it out in your head, right? The cardinal sign of fire, our first one, cardinal sign of fire was represented by the two, three, four, and we know the cardinal sign of fire is Aries. So you already know that the two, three, and four of wands, the suit of fire, is going to represent the archetype of Aries. Um, that's how we get our minor associations and I'll also show the major associations that govern it and kind of maybe for the first one, explain what that means. Um, and then I'll just move through all 12. Okay. So let's start with Aries then. Actually, first I'm going to start talking about, uh, the horoscopes, the zodiac sign in the tarot and how this shows up, right? So what the signs are in astrology, um, the 12 signs represent different qualities of a person's personality or character traits or way of processing their world. In tarot, these qualities, so any astrology book you look at will have valid information for tarot because in tarot, these qualities are then expanded to be interpreted as influences affecting each tarot card in a specific way. Okay, so these signs don't make up the definitions of the cards that they correspond to, but rather they're an influence on the card, if that makes sense. So we can already think in our description, we were talking about, um, before I even read about Aries, how it's two or three or four of wands. If you pull the two of wands, three of wands, or four of wands, each of those, like in your tarot notebook, you can write down, going back to the last video, how is the cardinal, because it's a cardinal aspect, how does the cardinal aspect influence the definition of this card? And now we can ask ourselves, for two, three, and four of wands, how does the archetype or lens of Aries influence the two of wands, influence the three of wands, and influence the four of wands? Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So here we go, we'll get started. So the first sign, like I said, we're gonna be talking about is Aries. Aries brings the influence of intuitive and instinctual mental facilities versus intellectual. So this is an instinctual, but there's still mental activity here. It brings a manifested rush, Aries a sign, brings a manifested rush of energy to fulfill the thought, which can also result in regrettable situations by premature action. Okay, so like, let's say if you're reading with the two of wands, right, and we're looking at making these choices along this fire realm already, right, we're, we're looking at, uh, you know, and when they talk about mental versus intellectual, the swords are more intellectual. Uh, mental process, that's what we could use to will or to intend. You know, we come up with that sentence, I intend this, right? 
if we act, you know, you could even tell someone like, okay, if you're going to make a choice or decision with this card, well, if you act too soon, premature action, right, that could be a regrettable situation. This might not work out in your best interest. Aries influences are understanding the world from a subjective perspective, a search through self, inner self through activity, taking initiative when opportunity arises, poor responses to routine or repetition, and a desire for spontaneity and freedom to pursue new goals. So all those symbols, or in Aries, all that affects the tarot cards then. So that's written down for you there. And when we look at then the minor arcana of Aries, two of wands, three of wands, four of wands. So that all influences that. And the major arcana that governs Aries is the emperor. So not only does the emperor, and we'll, we'll go through the planets when we get to them. This is just the astrology signs. Not only does the emperor govern all the fours, because he's a four from the numerology, right? He also governs two, three, and four because of wands, because he's Aries. Okay. The next card we're going to talk about, or zodiac sign we're going to talk about, is Taurus. And remember, Taurus is the fixed earth. Represented by the five, six, and seven of pentacles. And the major arcana that governs it is the Hierophant. So the Hierophant not only governs all fives in the deck, but governs the five, six, and seven of pentacles. Okay. Taurus. Now let's keep those out. That's fun. Taurus brings the influence of sensory, right, in the pentacles, sensory and sensuality. Experiencing reality through the sense of touch, tangible and material. Not rushing into anything, giving forethought. Like this could be, you know, an interesting way to look at the succession. If this is all just for Taurus, right, not rushing into something. Here's the best, maybe, or one end of the spectrum, really waiting. Maybe the five of pentacles is rushing into something and six is that balanced earth sign. I don't know. So it's interesting, right? So not rushing into anything for thought and slow informing opinions. Taurus brings a love of beauty, luxury, overabundance, an intuitive understanding of how spirit manifests through nature and realizing dreams by working with solid subjects. The next astrology sign in the year is Gemini. Gemini is the mutable sign of air. Mutables are 8, 9, 10, so it's 8, 9, 10 of swords. And 8, 9, 10 of swords, challenging Gemini, and its major arcana that governs not only the sixes, but the 8, 9, 10 of swords is the lovers, right? And the lovers is all about choices, sometimes unifying those opposites, etc. So. Gemini brings the influences of self-definition through mental process and understanding duality of what's observed. So there we go. That could even be looked at this. Understanding duality of what's observed. The influence to examine all sides of the situation. Reason through every thought and experience. A concern for rationalization. And looking at life from different perspectives. And really... The eight, nine, ten of swords is all about looking at life through different perspectives. So those are, again, remember not talking about personality traits. If you hear your sign here, some of that may apply. However, we're looking at these are just the influences on the tarot cards. So, you know, for these eight, nine, ten of swords, they're going to be influenced by understanding the duality of what's observed. And the lover's card, too, then, right, as a major arcana, trumping these. This is going to be like a spiritual governing theme. So you're going to want to be able to bring that into your readings, right? Next is Cancer, which is the cardinal sign of water. So we have the two, three, and four of cups. And the major arcana association is the chariot here. Operating on emotional instinct. Sensitivity to atmosphere and environment. Being receptive to vibrational energy. 
that might be a really good one for four of cups and even two of cups when we're looking at things that are in emotional alignment with us, right? Vibrational energy. Um, other influences. A strong instinctive nature. You know, a lot of this goes into with the chariot too. Extremely intuitive. Uh, difficulty regulating thoughts and emotions. That could be some of our three and four of cups. Concern for emotional comfort and security. Could be chariot, could be some of that three and four of cups. And the need for making strong emotional connections. Definitely two of cups, strong emotional connections. So that's cancer. After cancer comes our wonderful sign of our Leos, which is the fixed sign of fire. So this is the five, six, and seven of wands. And the major arcana card that governs it is strength. The influences of Leo on these four cards are, and maybe even embodied in the major arcana, we could think. I kind of like that. Influencing the minor, how are they embodied in the major, right? Because when these come up in a reading, so, and this is what's cool too, this is a little bit of a side, right? When this comes up in a reading, think about the fact that you already know, you don't have to tell your client, you know, oh, the six of wands is governed by strength. But you already know, if you know that that's six of wands, because it's Leo is represented by strength and kind of governed by that on a side, you already know that it's going to take a certain amount of inner strength to achieve this, right? And it's going to take a certain, but you're going to be successful. You're going to be victorious in this. So it gives you just that one extra like perspective or depth, okay? So the influences of Leo is an enthusiastic and steady spirit. Think about how all that manifests in the five, six, and seven of wands. Enthusiasm, steady, holding steady, right? Even with the strength card holding steady. Courage, love, loyalty, a dramatic impact on every situation, or a desire to affect the immediate environment to favor individual ego identity. That's a lot, but that happens a lot in the Five of Wands and the Seven of Wands. If you read cards, you know those come up a lot for like those work things when there's that clashing with people fighting with their ego identity, right? Also, I love this one. It's great. Great meaning for strength in the Six of Wands. Individual creative expression. Doesn't have to be art, right? A creative expression. There's our Leo. Their next sign in the Wheel of the Year is Virgo. And these, Virgo is a mutable earth sign. So the influent Virgo influences the eight, nine, and ten of pentacles and is represented by the major arcana of the hermit. Remember, nine is the number of attainment, so there's a lot of that too in pathway and movement with the hermit card. He's not standing still, okay? So not only does he govern all the nines in the deck, the four nines, you can pull out and see how the hermit governs and influences them, but he governs the eight, nine, ten of pentacles as well, manifestations, complete manifestations here on the earth plane, okay? So the influences of Virgo on these cards is acquiring knowledge and practical talents and putting them to use. Okay, you can see that right there. Perfection is goal in any pursuit. Eight, nine, ten, perfection, right? That's what the hermit strives for. Material benefits, again, our pentacles, material benefits in direct correlation to the energy invested. Performing a service an intuitive intellect, being precise and dependable. So even think about that. If this came up in a reading, just the Hermit card, right? We know governs Virgo, being precise and dependable. Well, if this came up to represent someone in the reading, right? Or maybe something that the client needs, like they need to be more precise or they need to be dependable right now or they need to surround themselves with dependable people. That's another meaning of the Hermit, see, that you can kind of draw into there. All right, we're halfway through. I'm going to try to speed it up. I don't want this to be super long forever. The next one is Libra. The two, three, four of swords being the cardinal sign of air and then representing justice in the major arcana. Libra is the dynamic of giving and receiving. Remember, air, out, outgoing, incoming, vibration, communication, giving and receiving, justice, scales balancing. Self-knowledge via a reflection. What cool way to uh, look at these cards, right? Two of swords, three of swords, challenging four of swords is gaining self-knowledge through this bit of reflection, right? 
continuously adjusting behavior for all concerned. That fits into a lot of uh, justice there. Difficulty in making decisions, and we can lose opportunity through that. Right, so that's something you want to talk about with your clients too if any of these come up. A need for harmony and balance, big for justice. A sense of justice in dealing with others, listening and communicating. Okay, so all those are for Libra. Our next sign is Scorpio, which being the fixed sign of water is the five, six, and seven of cups. And the major arcana that represents Scorpio is the death card. We're looking at Scorpio's influences on these cards is regeneration and new beginnings. But only after the old has been thoroughly explored. Okay, really interesting for that, this, this, and even for the death card. Discovering what is hidden and internal. Looking for truth or meaning behind existence. Hating to display a vulnerability or a weakness. Concern for deep understanding, connection, and transformation. Okay, so that's Scorpio's influences on those cards. Sagittarius is the mutable sign of fire. So it's represented by the 8, 9, 10 of wands and represented in the major arcana by the card of temperance. The influence that Sagittarius brings to these tarot cards is understanding life from a broader perspective, having a place in both this physical and spiritual worlds. What a great uh, lens for temperance too, if that comes up, right? Having a uh, place in both physical and spiritual worlds because we might need to balance those, right? Half inspiration from heaven, half feet on the ground, right? There's a great need for independence, both physical and mental. So that will show up in these cards a lot independence, avoiding emotional responsibility. That is an influence that gets brought to all of these cards or could be an expansive experience or never being satisfied. Wow, that would be really one with the 10 and maybe a uh, temperance reverse, right? C -c -c Capricorn, two, three, and four of pentacles is the cardinal sign of earth, governing or representing a major arcana by the devil. The influences Capricorn has on the Two of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, and Four of Pentacles, and on the Devil, is enormous energy into achieving personal objectives. Having each step planned and ground in physical reality. Wow, that's really good for like the Three and Four of Pentacles too, right? Manifesting aspirations, affirming your place in the hierarchy, maybe freeing yourself from a chain, and assuming something like that, being in control of your wants. Because, oh, here, yeah, right. Next word says disciplined, planning, waiting, attainment of worldly power. That one shows up a lot with this. Intense physical energy. That also shows up with this one. Good organization. You can see that maybe in the threes and the fours and the twos even because that keeps things balanced, right? A deep spiritual understanding and conserving energy until directed for maximum impact. So those are all some influences that Capricorn brings to the cards. Aquarius is the fixed sign of air, so that's represented by the five, six, and seven of swords, and the major arcana, the star. So the influence that it falls on all these cards from Aquarius is an enormous energy and complex mental processes. A preoccupation with the world created inside the mind. That's an interesting, uh, interesting lens. Not saying it's the definition of the card, right? But it's an interesting lens for like the star card existing in a world of our own mind. Or maybe why the five of swords movement in six or even on the seven, right? Experimentation. Unusual people's ideas or experiences. Rebelling against authority. <laughs> That could definitely be a five or seven. Concern for innovation or some men or being mentally chaotic. That definitely could fall into the seven of swords and maybe even star would help balance that, right? Our last sign is our mutable sign of water, Pisces, represented by the eight, nine, and ten of cups. 
and represented by the moon card in the major arcana and the influences of Pisces. An innate empathy and understanding of all the thoughts, actions, and feelings of the 11 other signs. That's definitely could fall into the moon card there. Internal emotional activity that in connects intuitive consciousness to the source of all life. Wow. Intuitive emotional activity for the 8, 9, 10 and the moon. It's awesome. Uh, the influence of being sensitive to emotional vibrations and thought waves. Spiritual involvement and emotional understanding. Right? So when these cards come up, you can think about that even. What's the, there's an influence of spiritual involvement and emotional understanding there. Okay, so that's the 12 signs of the Zodiac and how they're represented in the tarot deck. Um, next, we'll talk about planets. Study up. Blessings.